Hi everybody, and thanks for joining me today. So, show you where we are. We're almost done on the stones under the fountain and we're moving into the uh, flower out bushes there. The last of the orange and yellow and white flowers. And then we'll be moving into the pillars and then we'll be done. So yeah, that's exciting. As I mentioned in a previous video, the kiddo has this week off school, so if you hear some background noise, that's that's what it is. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I've been making a little bit slower progress here because uh got a lot of colors. It's quite confetti heavy in this area. When I get to the pillars, that part kind of goes a little faster because, uh, oh, whoops. There's more, uh, columns of color, which if you've watched previous videos when I got there, yeah, I kind of end up stitching more vertically and it goes, goes quicker. So but we're almost at 95%. So we shall see. So I'm guessing three to four weeks left. Yeah, the home stretch is always exciting. So I said, uh, my son and I escaped catching uh, dad's cold, but I guess I spoke too soon. <laughs> At a couple days, I was feeling off. Kiddo's got a bit of a cough and sniffles, so not as bad as my husband had it, though. So there's that, at least. two threads of this color that I'm working on right now. Let's see how long. So they're both pretty long, so I'm going to kind of juggle both of them. Actually, I have three, technically. There's a third one parked down here. Let's see. That one's pretty short, yeah. That's only going to be good for the two there, so that's okay. I can see already what I'm, I'm going to do with these. So I'm going to park that one there. Switch colors. Ah, actually, I'm going to do these first. Because then I can do both of the uh, cash symbol ones at the same, one after another. So. Did that because then, oops, got to get the right color selected. Then I can do these two one after another and tie it off. Oh, if I could thread my needle, that is. There we go. So if this was longer, I would have parked it down below, but it is too short to bother doing that, so give me time to just secure this and 
trim it. Okay, so now back to this, this one. So I've talked about how I finish these uh, pieces as uh, wall hangings with a cloth backing. And I did make a video um, with a smaller piece that I did. Um, do you guys want me to make a new one with a larger piece? Uh, let me know in the comments because I can do that. But I mean, it's the same process as I showed on the the smaller piece, the uh, the Zelda Legend of Zelda little wedding announcement that I made. It's the same idea, just enlarged. The same way of gluing them together and creating the uh, fabric frame, sort of around the piece. This one was borderline. I could have left it, but oh well. <laughs> I already picked it up and threaded it, so kind of committed now. All right. So. Oops. <laughs> there. Catching it on my fingers there. All right, so I have a thread already parked here, but yeah, it's not too long. And also they're kind of spread apart, so I'm gonna do another small one over here because I know I have lots of little leftover bits from using this color before. Yeah, so I might as well use, use one up. I also like to avoid jumping around and leaving long carries on the back when I can, although my backs are not perfect. I've seen some people have backs of their pieces that look almost like a, just a mirror image of the front, and that's amazing, but I don't have that much patience or talent to do that. So, Plus, when I mount mine, on cloth, it gets all glued together, so you'll never see the back, <laughs> even if you wanted to. <sighs> the really, the only important thing about your back is make sure all your ends are secure so they're not going to come apart on you. And uh, try not to leave any huge lumps or knots so that it won't affect your framing. Although I did have someone who said that the back of their piece was quite lumpy and they just, the framer... They had them put like a piece of like almost like quilt batting on the back that allowed any knots to sort of sink into it. And uh, they said, yeah, it turned out great. And you couldn't see that it was any lumps once it was professionally framed. So that's an option too. Yeah, so we finished watching, we were binge watching the show Chuck 
and it was fun, but I have to say, I think it's another show that should have ended a season before it actually did, because I liked the ending at the end of season four. Everything was quite nicely wrapped up, really, and I liked that ending. It was good. And then they went for another season, a shortened season, so it was only 13 episodes instead of, you know, the usual 22 to 26, but... um I'm not going to give away anything. I won't say any spoilers, but three the three episodes from the end, there was a big twist, and I found the way they resolved it rather bittersweet. So, like, it wasn't terrible. It didn't ruin it, but yeah, I wasn't I wasn't thrilled. <laughs> Yeah, I looked up reviews too. Oh, oh I missed the spot there. See, that stitch looks wonky because I didn't come up in the correct fabric hole. I'll try that again. Yeah, and uh, anyway, I was looking at people's reviews and it was very mixed. Some absolutely loved the ending. Some hated it. Some were like me. What was they saying? It was, it was okay, but not what they would have preferred. So it didn't ruin it. I mean, I'm still glad I watched the show. It was lots of fun. It, uh, it was almost like a spoof of uh, spy stuff, which made it really fun. But, uh, yeah. Well, there's shows. Like, there were a couple things about how Deep Space Nine ended, which is my favorite show ever. And in my mind, that's not how it ended. But, um... But I still love the show, you know, even though the ending was not quite what I would have wanted, so. The one that was really wrecked for me was, um, BBC did a, uh, Robin Hood in, I think, the early 2000s. Went for, like, three seasons, and it was, it was fun. But then, yeah, they, um... They tried to keep it going when it should have ended, and they pulled some plot things that just, they wrecked it, and I don't think I'll ever watch that again. I'm someone who likes to rewatch stuff that I enjoyed, but I don't think I'll ever be watching that one again. I mean, it wasn't too much. I got it on DVD for like 20 bucks because it was on sale, so it's not like I invested a ton in it, but yeah. I guess that's sort of the risk when you buy a show that you haven't watched before. Sometimes it works out like uh, Battlestar Galactica came on sale on Blu-ray for really cheap and it recommended it to me because, of course, I'm a sci-fi fan. And I thought, okay, we'll take a chance, and I loved it. And we haven't rewatched it, but we are going to. I know that. We're just sort of, it was so good and poignant the way it ended that... It, we don't want to, we haven't been able to watch it yet, again yet. It's like we still have the, uh, oh no, it's over, hangover feeling. So, but we will. My husband says he wants to sort of forget what happened in it a bit more before we, we start it again. We have lots of, I mean, like somebody was saying, it's like the golden age of television now. There is so much out there. So, it's not really a hardship to leave it for a little while longer. Yeah, I know there was uh, some mixed reviews about the um, the Rings of Power show, which was the um, the uh, Lord of the Rings prequel, but we we quite liked it. So yeah, I'm glad that one will be coming back for another season. Not a lot of zeroing out colors here because a lot of these colors I'm using here are also going to be used in the pillars. So, yeah, as you can see, like this one's still got 
almost 1200 stitches left of this color so oh, missed coloring one in some lotion on my hands before I started and now the needles I'm having a harder time gripping them oh dear yeah it's definitely winter now for us now it's when I uh I plan my uh, errand runs around the uh weather forecast and whether it's gonna dump a bunch of snow on us or not so because I won't be walking to the store either because I do that when it's uh, nice. If I only have to grab a couple of things and I'll just walk there in the morning. That way, you know, get my exercise and get what we need and save on gas. But yeah, not when it's, not when it's this cold. Although it hasn't been too bad yet. I don't really consider it cold until it gets to uh, minus 30, that's Celsius, so I'm not sure what that is in Fahrenheit for you guys. I do know minus 40 is the same for both. Pardon me. <sighs> Try to keep those ends even. That way if I have to unthread the needle and then rethread it later, it makes it much easier. I don't have to trim any of it. If it's uneven, then I will have to. find a hair clip. I got little pieces of hair that are just long enough to sort of hang and tickle my chin and they annoy me. <laughs> so, Okay, I'll need a new one of those. Eight, two, three. Yeah, this was one of the most used colors on this pattern.
I don't think it ever left my working tray. Okay, go back up the diagonal a bit. Try to finish this little section here so that I can I can then park those uh, or end off those threads. I have fewer with needles on them. And yeah. Yeah, there's a little bit of an end from the back coming up to the front, so just use my snag tool. There we go. Yeah, it's kind of irritating how one pull of the thread will bring it up to the front, but then trying to pull it back is such a pain. <laughs> The snag tool is really nice for that. It's actually a knitting tool, but it works great. It's like a long needle with a roughened textured edge, so it just grabs that bit of fluff and pulls it back to the other side. Okay, and then my other thread of this color. Okay, so I don't usually cross as I go, but this time I'm going to because I want the thread to end up on the other side that I started, so on the right-hand side. Like I said, I don't care if my back looks perfectly consistent, so... And honestly, on these patterns with so many colors, it's kind of impossible. <laughs> well, I guess it is possible some people do it, but that takes more brain power than I'm willing to spend on this, so. <laughs> okay. All right, I can see here I'm gonna end up with more than one thread of this color, that's for sure. Quite a lot spread out here. That's fine. Oh, that wasn't a loop. That was two threads. I thought it was a loop. Haha. <laughs> no wonder I couldn't catch it. All right, let's try that again. <laughs> let's find me a different thread. 
They weren't even the same length. I don't know. <laughs> so I think I'm going to hit 95 today. Maybe not in this session, but by the end of my day of stitching, probably. After I finish this uh, session with you guys, I'm gonna bake some banana bread. Okay. Yeah, we almost always end up with some leftover because usually the bunches I end up buying have six in them and you need five for the uh, school week. So there's always one left. So I end up freezing them. You need three bananas for one loaf of bread with the, the recipe I use. So yeah, adds up after a while. Yeah, I had a neighbor who said she had like an ice cream tub full of banana. She didn't think about the fact that um, it was frozen solid. So then you'd either have to make like, you know, a dozen loaves of banana bread at once to use it up or, uh, you know, you'd have to like chisel it out. <laughs> uh, I think she said she finally just ended up throwing it all away. So it was a total waste. Uh, yeah, that's one thing I like to do when I have to... Um, freeze stuff to reuse later is um, freeze it in ice cube trays and then that way it's already separated into little little portions so like if I have leftover um, you know beef or chicken stock I will I will freeze it as ice cubes and then you can just grab you know whatever amount you need because if you only need say half a cup to make a sauce then you only have to grab you know three or four these big ice cubes instead of, yeah, you know, grabbing the whole thing, so. Or I even did that when I had some leftover corn, and then I could just throw in a little bit and not the whole big <laughs> lump of it, so yeah. doesn't really take that much more effort to pour it into an ice cube tray before you freeze it so yeah it works out well and then after it's frozen you can just put it in a Tupperware or whatever even if they sort of stick together a bit it's not very hard to break them apart if they've been frozen separately Okay, yeah, I was going to start another one right there. Yeah, no blue sky today. It's overcast, but at least it's like the white sky, not gray. I hate it when it's that gray, gloomy overcast. That's depressing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, fortunately, they were calling for a ton of snow today, but not anymore. So. Calling for like a foot of snow, but now thankfully it's... Uh, it's not. If we do get some, it's only supposed to be a little bit, so.
Oops. Darn it. Yeah. One hazard of using shorter pieces like that is uh, easier to unthread your needle, but I like to use every last bit that I can. be it. There's sort of one more stitch right here, but I have another thread part right there, so I'll use that one, because this one is really too short to park. This one, yeah, it's only long enough for the two stitches, so that works out fine. Those are all out of the diagonal, so I'm gonna tuck them away. Those are not, but I kind of have to fill in some more over here before I get to that. So, so I set those ones aside a bit so they don't get tangled with my other live threads until I get to them. So yeah, that's how I keep things from tangling. It does happen occasionally, but not enough that it's a big deal, generally. gonna check this. yeah that's pretty short okay so I'm gonna start another one there Okay, so it's going to be a while till I get to this thread again, so I'm going to park it and then unthread it. So. More likely to cause a tangle if I left it threaded than if I didn't, so it's kind of a juggling act between trying to avoid having to re-thread and trying to avoid tangles. been stitching this way for about a year and a half now. A bit longer with actual parking, but it took me a while to sort of uh, hone my technique until it's what you 
see here. I used to sort of do uh, cross country more within the diagonal, but then I changed and began to focus more on not uh, closing things in, so. Okay, so I did it that, because then, yes, I wanted to be able to do more of these in a row. have one part. Let's see how long it is. About long enough, yeah. So, doing those two there. Lots of this, as you can see. That's just sort of how it worked out. So let's get a long one. And a fairly long one. Okay. So you can see what I'm going to do with all of these. There's quite a lot of this color around here, so I'll probably end up using all of these. to uh, cross check and count from multiple points to make sure that I've parked in the correct spot. So from grid lines and from stitches I've already done, everything should match. If it doesn't, then I know I messed something up. my camera there. Okay. See here, this bit looks like part of the bush and not the, the stones. That's why it's uh, got some different colors in it. Sometimes hard to tell when you're working up close.
Nope, yeah, not quite right. I think the worst I did was I was crossing the top legs and I accidentally went over two and I didn't realize till after I had tied off that thread. Yeah, and of course I had to fix it because even though no one else would probably see it, to me it was like a big neon sign. <laughs> so I had to cut and unravel and then add some more thread to fix it. Oh, that was a pain. Or one time I somehow managed to cross it like a plus sign instead of an X. I don't even know how I managed to do that, but yeah. It's really weird. Yeah, that is why when I'm really tired, I don't stitch because I'm more likely to make uh, mistakes I have to fix later, which just costs me more time in the long run. Okay, so now I'm up into these, back into these ones that I tucked away earlier, but I left the needles on because I knew I would be back for them. Remember the other thread that's parked up here of this color is long enough to do all those stitches, so this one I'm going to end off. Oops. Save those leftover pieces for later. Oh, they're 
but why that looks wonky. Huh. Strange. bottom lake that ended up kind of funky there. There we go. Okay, there. And that left sort of an extra little loop that was poking up in a weird way. There we go. Now it's nice and taut, so it should be. Yes, now it lies neatly. One down there at the bottom, and <clears throat> one up here at the top. All right, and these are both, both fairly long. That's okay. So I'm gonna do these three with this top thread. And I'm gonna park it over to the right, and the other thread is going to go downwards.
Oh, actually, <laughs> right, I forgot that's the same color. <laughs> Whoops, parked that wrong. My mistake, I missed that there was one here above the grid line to do first. Yeah, there we go. So much confetti. Yeah, like I've said before, this is the most confetti heavy piece I've ever done. But the results are worth it. The detail in this is incredible. especially since I went for the large version. The regular version is about 60,000 stitches. And yeah, this one's almost 225,000, so that definitely makes a difference. Add another thread, my gosh. <laughs> I think I'm adding more than I'm finishing today. Oh, sometimes that's the way it goes. Yeah, and as I've said before, I find it's the adding <coughs> threads that's actually the slowest part. Not the switching between once you have them already attached. It's the attaching new ones that, yeah, really slows it down. Well, even so, we're still getting a good pace going today. So yeah, pretty happy about that. Okay. Well, now there's one I can finish.
sure I marked the correct one off as there's another one parked further up. I've done that before and then had to try and figure out what I did after. That was not fun. So I could do a bunch of these. And I wanted to be able to go down and come back up so I could park over here. So there was that reason for doing that too. I don't know why I keep splitting the fabric today. It's like the third time. <laughs> I don't usually do it that often. I don't know what's with me today. So yeah, lots of this color parked, but because there's so much around here, they are all getting used up, so no problem.
Okay. Yeah, same with this color. <coughs> Multiple threads, but lots of stitches to use them. What do you say? It's a nice even 150 a good place to stop? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Find the right spot, geez. Okay, so yeah, 150. That's a good place to stop. So, um, as usual, thank you so much for joining me today, and I hope to see you here again another time. All right, thanks everyone. Bye.